Hello, everybody. Before we get to the video and the conversation at hand today, I just wanted to again take a moment to let you guys know that for months now, my friend Shanti and I have been working on creating a panel event called Tales of Survivors of the Dark Side or Tales from the Dark Side. Again, this is a panel event of multiple, multiple big name people who grew up in occult families and are here to share their stories. So if you are interested in the occult and you're interested in the more of the macabre side of life, you might be interested in joining this paneled event. Now the tickets are on sale right now. They're 50% off. There's a link down in the description box below. It premieres, this event premieres on Friday, October the 11th at 11 a.m. Eastern time, but that's just the time it premieres. It's when it drops on Gnostic TV. If you have a ticket, you can watch this panel at any time that you want to. It's not going away. It'll be there forever as long as you have your ticket to watch the event. So if you hold on for one second, you'll get to watch a brief commercial regarding this event. And if you want a thorough commercial, a more in-depth commercial, Go down to Gnostic's link to watch the full trailer of what's going to be spoken about in this event. Hello, everybody. If you are a fan of the occult, especially the darker side of the occult, if you like learning about the stuff that is done in the shadows, boy, do we have an event for you. We want to welcome you to Tales of Survival from the Dark Side. Wow, what a lineup of speakers we have. I've had the privilege of meeting incredible survivors on my channel, uh, Aquarius Rising Africa, over the past four years. And it's been an amazing journey for me to bring them over and just share with more new people sharing their stories now guys this is going event is going to be held over on gnostic tv and Indeed. tickets are, are now on sale they're 50 percent off right shanti so we have a link yeah. below um and also if you want to watch the full trailer of the event which cannot be shown on youtube you can hop over to gnostic tv and watch that trailer as well we're looking to release this panel live on gnostic tv on friday october the 11th at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So Tickets are 50% off. And yeah. once, you, once you've bought your ticket, you can watch as many shows as you want and you can watch them as many times as you want. Support our survivors. They deserve to be heard. And there's nothing better, more healing for a survivor, for a survivor than to be told, I believe you. So thank you guys. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure to ask Shanti or me down in the comment section, be section below. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you guys over on Gnostic TV. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called the Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. You get kind of a double coffee time this week because of last week, Catherine had some issues going on. And of course, last week, week from today, marks the start for us for Hurricane Helene, which is what we're going to be actually talking about today. I know we kind of wanted to do a part two of our coffee talk on Monday with 
energetic vampires, but I think that this is when I text you, Catherine, I think this conversation is far more important and more yep. imminent of what of what's going on in in our world today, especially where I live in the southeastern part of the United States. But as we know, what happens in one part of the world, literally, we're in this huge global thing right now. So we can mirror in other parts of the world things that are going on. And before we get into it, though, I know I've got a lot of um, new subscribers. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Catherine and I, I'm going to put all of Catherine's links, all of her channel links, um, her Instagram, all down in the description box below. Every other week, we go on each other's channel to have what we call coffee chats. And these are just kind of like things that are on our mind that we don't really have an answer for, but either things that are bothering us or things that are cool to us that we just kind of want to chit chat with you guys about and kind of get your feedback as well because we don't have all the answers. But, you know, when they say, what, what, what do they say when you see something, say something? And I've mm -hmm. definitely seen something this past week within human behavior. And I sent you all the information, Catherine, and we definitely should be talking about what is going on in North Carolina and uh, with the natural, or we say, we'll say natural disaster because it's YouTube. We'll just say natural disaster of the Hurricane Helene. So how are you today, Catherine? <laughs> that was a long intro. Oh, yeah. I, I'm heavy today. Honestly, I have to be, you know, we can't be upbeat all the time. And I've been heavy this whole week. I think, um, you know, the reality of where we're at and how little control a lot of us have over that really hits home when things like this come up. And it, it's just... The reality of the fact that you can be as prepared so much for like, but if if the powers that be are going to pull something like this, then and 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 also like we're really going to dive into today the human reaction to it and how constantly, of course, there's always examples which are really uplifting, but there's also a huge amount of examples that are really really disappointing yeah. um, about where we're at as humanity, really. Yeah, and I'm just going to back up a little bit for those that are not from the United States. Of course, most of you guys might know, especially if you've been following me for a while, You probably the media is not really talking about it. Where I live in Georgia, in Atlanta, we're used to getting hit with hurricanes, hurricanes and tornadoes. This is just something that we are very, very used to. We In Atlanta, we get it from both the Gulf Coast and the Atlantic side of the United States seaboard. Now, I'm at the base of Appalachia. Atlanta is like literally at the base. And so... We are not considered mountain in Atlanta. But if I go two hours north, I'm straight in the heart of Appalachia. Well, what happened with Hurricane Helene is very bizarre to begin with, the path that it, it chose to take. First of all, when it hit Florida in the Gulf, it was a tropical storm. And normally when a sea, a sea storm, a storm that forms at sea, hits land, it starts to dissipate. So by the time it reaches where I live in Atlanta, it's it's calmer than it was. It's still going to bring damage, but it's not as disastrous that maybe as it was when it hit land. However, with Helene, something peculiar started from the very beginning. It started as a tropical storm. It hit Florida as a tropical storm, but it actually gathered momentum as it got to land and turned into a hurricane which from my understanding is so freaking bizarre and not normally what happens that it's it's questionable as to why that happened, but that's not really the, how and why that happened is not really the conversation of this video. I'm just kind of giving you guys a backstory. Well, Helene, we got really, we had a 100 miles per hour winds here. Our power just flickered, so nothing super bad happened here. We had some branches and trees down, but nothing like destructive, right? Life kind of picked up after a couple of days and businesses reopened. The hurricane kind of swerved around and then went curved up into Appalachia. And this is strange. Appalachia's high ground. It's high up in the mountains. They don't experience hurricanes in the mountains. So this these mountain towns were not prepared for something like this. So what ended up happening is we have all these little mountain towns kind of in these coves. In the mountain, Asheville, North Carolina being the big one. Um, Chimney Rock, North Carolina. There's a... With North Carolina, Tennessee, parts of Georgia, there's these little towns that have been obliterated. I mean, they're completely underwater. And mm -hmm. the death toll, we know our president gave some numbers yesterday that are not accurate. They're not, I mean, obviously they're not accurate. The death toll now is higher than Katrina. Um, the damage now is higher than Katrina. And what's happening 
with these areas is these mudslides came and, t and tore down the roads to get into the town. So people can't even get out or get into these towns. The only way possible is helicoptering. Now, other people who are in other areas that got affected, I know for 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 sure, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys before before I forget. Um, there is a channel here on YouTube called Cold Bear, Bear Confessionals. Will Bird is the host of this. I love this channel. He's a lot like Catherine and me, where we're we're truthers, but we're not delusional truthers. He's like that, and he actually covered a lot of my um my uh, my court case with my stalker, and he was hysterical covering it. And um, he calls out a lot of grifters in the truth of the world. So I have a, a huge respect for Will Byrd. Um, from my understanding, he is an ex-military. He was a veteran of our country. And he actually is in an area that had his community completely obliterated. Um, and so I know that that, that uh, he has a GoFundMe and a way to help. I know his moderators are trying to get financial aid to help. So um, I'm going to be putting his links down in the description box as well if you guys want to help him out. But he is actually in an area that literally got obliterated, which kind of brings us to some of the problems that we're seeing. Because um, I posted a video on my TikTok yesterday about this and I was absolutely like heartbroken and emotional over the responses that I was getting on this video from both sides of the aisle from normies and from truthers both the normies and the truthers seem to have the same opinion that what's happening isn't real the normies don't think it's real because the media is not saying anything about it the truthers don't think it's real because they think it's part of the movie and they think that it's all fake or a comment that I got, they think that it was uh, the flooding was set in to remove the bad guys. And my question to both sides is where, excuse my language, but I think it calls for this. Where the fuck is your humanity? Mm. Have you allowed these times for both these delusional truthers and these delusional normies? Have you allowed these this timeline to turn you into a psychopath? Catherine, I was just telling you before we started filming children's bodies are being found in trees mm -hmm. now you want to say that was done to flush out the bad guys what did a four-year-old do there's a story of a mother that was standing in her house and a huge wave and with you guys if you've never experienced hurricanes they're not to be messed with you will be taken out it's it's the wave came and took off half of her house and while she was standing there her child and her parents were sending at, standing at the part of the house that was taken out and she watched as her child and her parents were swept away to certain death and i had sent you catherine before we i wanted before again before i forget after i taught i I was driving home and I was reading these comments before I left the Shala and I was again just like in utter shock at the psychotic response I was getting from this video. And this particular video happened to pop up on my feed as I was driving, ho driving home by Mark Vicente, who of course was in the um, Nexium cult with our friend Kelly Teal. And it's a really good video that kind of goes through the same thing with this hurricane as well about the different reactions and our side has to be right. So their side has to be wrong and we're, we're missing the truth of it all. Um, and so, yeah, let's, let's take off from there, Catherine. What, where do you want to go from there with this? There's so many places I want to go here. So I'll jump around a little bit to begin with, and then we can um, home in on all these different areas. The first and foremost is, is, um, you and I have been talking, as have loads of people, about this delusional black and white thinking, this delusional um, infiltration into the so-called truth of community that the white hats are in control. And whether it's President Trump swapped out all the jibby jabbies for good ones to, you know, you name it, every single bad thing that happens, it's, oh, they have to do that to get rid of the bad lot. They have to go do that. And it's so delusional. It's really, really upsetting um, because the level of brainwashing that people that quite frankly should know better, you know, if you're a normie and you're not engulfed in this sort of content, you have an excuse because if you don't know what questions to ask, but when you're involved in a whole community where the whole point of it is to ask questions and you're so stuck in your need to be right over 
humanity, common sense. And let's not forget that all of these things that there, as well as all the human victims, there's a huge amount of wildlife that is absolutely decimated and destroyed. And they feel the same emotions and distress and torture as we all do. Um, so I think I'd like to sort of bring it back to also the full event. So a full doesn't mean that the event didn't happen and that people or or animals weren't killed it means that who you think organized it didn't and it was actually an inside job and the same things with these so i i've been watching um obviously i've had dame wigginton from org several times on my channel so though you can't find those they're so shadow banned you can't find them unless you literally go to the playlist on my channel and that says it all so the patents are there and and I know that we're not really talking about who caused it, but it is relevant because if you seriously think that any of the people are in control, regardless what party you're talking about, this geo weatherman patents to direct hurricanes and things, um, energy direct energy weapons, and I won't say any more trigger words. These patents have been out for years throughout the Trump administration, throughout the Bush administration, throughout the Obama administration. So just because you put a different person at the head. And the other thing, just to, I know I'm jumping around, but I heard a brilliant, one of my listeners sent me a brilliant interview, one of the first ones that Julia Assange has done. And I'll put it up on my Telegram and my community page afterwards, because it is absolutely key when he's saying that actually... Obama didn't prosecute him or want him in jail. It was the Trump administration that changed that. And now, whether it was Trump himself or people in his team is irrelevant. These atrocities are happening under all the administrations. So for anyone thinking still that anyone that's going to come in and turn this around is so delusional at this state. And these people are suffering. You've only got on every single platform you can find helicopter pilots that were trying to go in and rescue people that were turned back by state officials mm -hmm. and armies and things and they weren't allowed to go in and rescue people it's Lahaina all over again the streets were blocked off in Lahaina the water fountain the water was turned off so no one could put the fires out the people in the sea the sea was on fire yeah this isn't normal, guys. Didn't a dam come down as well? Yeah, a dam came down, and there's a there's a lithium that was released. Yeah, the lithium. Yeah. yeah. So, it so yeah, I think the whole thing. I think I I'm I really think we've got to put on our big boy pants and just accept. You can't change anything in any aspect of your life if you don't first accept where we are. Yeah. And people on both sides are so attached to being right and making the other side wrong that they've lost all sense of rational thinking. They're so fighting for their own limitations and basically they're going to bring everyone down with them. And that's kind of what Mark Vicente was talking about. He wasn't even talking about this hurricane because this video was released before it. Yeah. But it was it's so relevant. So I'm going to post that down below. And um, and how you in a normal situation, how when we think we're right or we're on the right team, we will release what what normally is our moral compass. Yeah. Right. So your moral compass might be if I see somebody in trouble, I'm going to want to help them. But if you've been so attached to this particular team, we'll call it the truth or team. And you've been so attached to this idea that all these things happening in the world are fake. Then you can't release that idea, even though the evidence that this is real is right in your face. And this is also part of cognitive dissonance, right, where what you're hearing and what you're seeing are two totally different things. And you're in this delusional state. And, you know, I think too, and I've, uh, Catherine, we, I, I, I don't really want to say I told you so to, to people. I mean, not our audience, our audience, obviously they're like us, but to some of these other truthers that might see this, I kind of would be like, I fucking, we told you so. Like yeah. these opposing, you have this controlled opposition in the truth of the world. A lot of these people on YouTube or Rumble or Telegram that you watch and you follow who are giving you intel from whatever means they're getting their intel, channeling or from a source, they're controlled opposition. And they've got people in this place where people think that there are no more bad guys left in the world. It's all just the good guys running around putting a show on. 
and they've gotten you to accept to wake people up. To I wake mean, people up. But you do you not see how beautiful they played you? Because now you've turned into a psychopath. Because now their children body children's bodies are in the trees right now, and you're sitting there saying, Oh, it was just a bunch of bad guys anyway. What about save the children? Wasn't that how this all started anyway? I was listening to Kim Kim Sunshine, who's one she does the cold beer she's with that kind of group over there, and she has a great telegram channel as well, you guys. Um, and she was telling a story that they found a three year old boy wandering around crying who had a rope tied around his waist and it looks like that his parents tried to like tie him to them to keep him. Cause the, if you guys don't know what a hundred miles per hour winds, these are winds that think about tornadoes that will pick cars up. These, this is force of nature that will pick a car up. will mm -hmm. pick a building and uproot a building. So you think you can hold on to your child? No, it's going to rip your child. So this child had obviously been tied to his parent. That was obviously the, the only thing his, his parent could think to do. And for some reason, the parent got ripped away and the child was left screaming for their parents. I'm going to ask you, delusional truthers, to come, come down for a second. Get rid of all this conspiracy stuff in your head. And I want you to put yourself in their shoes as a human being, no matter what country you're from, no matter what race you are, no matter what gender you are, no matter what political affiliation you are. I want you to, as a human being, as someone who has a family, who has friends, to put yourself in their shoes. How would you feel if you watched your child get blown away, your dog get blown away, your car, your house is completely underwater, your business is completely underwater, your bank is underwater, you, you have limited food, limited water, no one's coming to help you. You're watching the, the few people, you can hear people screaming. And then you've got truthers out there saying, oh, it was just the bad guys anyway. It's, it's just fake anyway. How would you feel? I think the truther community at this point has lost their empathy. They've lost their humanity. They've lost it all. It's done. It's lost. And we've got to hopefully this experience so that these people's lives will not be lost in vain. Hopefully that this will be a wake up call to bring people back to a place of humanity. In morality, not much hope, unfortunately. Because look at Lahaina. Look how quickly yeah. that was written. And and again, in my last interview with Dane Wigginton from Geoengineering Knots, and it is really relevant because people like this have been signing the sounding the alarm bell, the alarm bells for years, years and years and years, and largely ignored. And most things about human nature is people don't really react until it hits them personally. Yeah. That's why so many people woke up during the so-called plan. Because it hit them personally. They lost their businesses. Um, they, they, they were being forced to do things they didn't want to do, etc. But how quickly that's forgotten. And the thing is, is we are literally, I've forgotten which movie it's in, but we are literally, there's a very famous quote where it's laying out the New World Order uh, agenda. And it's basically saying, we will put all these things in place so they're walking themselves to their own grave. We are now lemmings as a race. We are lemmings and we are walking ourselves over the cliff because we're too proud and too arrogant to actually admit we've been had. And yeah. once we've done that, you and I have been had on many occasions on this journey and we've admitted to all of the ones we know about. And there will be more. There will be more. Yeah. Um, you know, and that is what it is, is if you if you don't do better with more information, then shame on you. You know, you're then the people that are stopping the, the, this world really turning around because you're so stuck in your belief systems and you're so stuck about this black and white delusional thinking that there's the white hats and the black hats. And actually, it's an all emerging pot altogether. And anyone yeah. that can see what's happening on the geopolitical stage, look at the, I mean, in all our countries, it's a complete shit show. And it's a shit show because people are sitting there, and again, we've been guilty of it, talking about what bloody celebrities are getting up to, which might be horrific. Both things can be true. They can be going on. But the real issue is you're following unstable at best and evil at worst leaders. And look at what the actions are. Look at what they're actually doing. You know, take Elon Musk, whatever you think of him. 
why is he putting satellites up in stage? Look at the geoengineering watch about this weather pattern. And as Bryce laid out at the start, how unusual it was. Forces of nature have always happened. Yeah. This wasn't a force of nature. There are too many anomalies. And why does it matter? It matters because this is deliberate annihilation of certain areas, just like we've seen in other things. We saw in Australia a few years ago. We saw in Lahaina. We've seen in all sorts of Haiti, all sorts of other places. And if anyone is sitting here watching, still thinking the white hats are in control, I would seriously beg you to go and have a really good look at what is happening and the implications of that belief system and how vulnerable not only it leaves you, but all your loved ones. 100%. And, you know, it's, it's, that's what's, when we talk about natural disasters happening, when we say natural disasters, that's why people that live where I live know how to handle hurricanes and tornadoes, yes. you know, it's going to come. But when you send a natural disaster to an area that's not that doesn't get these particular natural disasters, not only are they not equipped to handle it, but the nature around them is not equipped to handle mm. it because hurricanes don't hit the mountains, right? That's just not what happens. And so the nature itself gets kind of topsy turvy, you know. And that's and, and exactly it's um I I'm just I mean I feel like about to cry because it's just no oh, I have a week. Mm -hmm. um that people and, and maybe it's because it is i mean Asheville is four hours away from me i was laughing with catherine for an america for america that's really close so mm -hmm. we're up there all the time and i just want to assure you guys Asheville's a beautiful mountain town all the towns around there that got affected you can follow people where they show before and after these are small towns you don't get big towns in the mountains you can't get big towns in the mountains these are small towns these are salts of the earth people they're just good old American people going to work every day, raising a family. They don't want to hurt anybody. They're not trying to hurt anybody. They're just living their lives. They love their towns. They love a lot of these towns have to, like touristy stuff with like white water rafting or, or hiking or, and they love it when people come visit, you know? And so for the, for the people not in America, I mean, and in America, like these, again, it doesn't matter what nationality, these are human beings. I'm yeah. sure in England, there's so many beautiful little towns with people that are just salt of the earth people that are not trying to hurt anybody. They just want to live their lives and have their family and do their jobs and have dinner every night. And they're not hurting anybody. That's the same as these people. So to label these people, oh, they must have been bad because this happened to them is appalling, is appalling. And I would say that about any area of the world that this happened. Mm -hmm. They're people like you and me. They're just people. They're just human beings. And I can't, I mean, can you imagine, Catherine, for those who do survive this, the trauma and the therapy that they're going to have to go through. They literally, you talk about having everything taken from you at once, your house, your business, your car, your family, your animals, everything is taken from you at once. And I will say too, there was a couple of truckers. I saw this video yesterday. Uh, there were some truckers that decided they were going to try to use their trucks to bring supplies into one of the towns they could get to. And these truckers stopped at particular weight stations and, and gas stations, and they all got their tires slashed. Yeah, I saw that. It's just absolutely horrendous. So why? Why is this happening? Why? Uh, it is literally like a mass yeah. sacrifice. It's an elimination. And it... It's like at what stage? And and it's hard. You know, as Bryce said at the start, these coffee chats, we do not have the answers. We're not pretending we've got the answers. And I have felt, when you said, how you felt, I felt really down all week because I'm just like, how quickly will this one be forgotten about like all the others have? You know, look at the mass loss of life in Australia uh, during the lockdown, people. Look at the fires that we had. Look at this. And, and yes, it's part of our survival instinct that we forget trauma like that. But deep down, we don't forget it. And deep down, it affects not only us, but generations still to come. But more importantly, it affects every single creature on Mother Earth. And this, this playing God that us humans have done for so long now is not just affecting us as a species, it's affecting every other species on the planet. And it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. And in terms of what should we do about it, I think come together and start again, like a clean slate. Um, 
you know, if I really want to switch off at night, I'll watch something trashy like Married at First Sight. And they yeah. have counsellors on there and they're talking about, they can give some really, really good advice, actually. And I think, you know, sometimes we have to agree to come together, wipe the slate clean and sort of say, where are we now? Where are we now? And how are we going to actually stop this? Because there's too much talking and not enough changes of behavior. On too an much judging each other, too much judging yeah. each other side. Like in the in the meantime, while you're sitting there thinking, I'm right because I'm a truther, so I just know the truth. People are dying, and I want to. There's um somebody brought this up, a, a person I follow on TikTok that's kind of like us. That's I feel like, and I don't mean to sound arrogant because I know we're not awake to everything, but Catherine, I feel like you and I are really awake. Like mm. we see both the faults, and Mark Vicente said that as well. He said both the, the petty hills people want to mm. die on aren't, aren't worth dying on. They're both messed up. But mm. there's a very famous song that was written during my parents' generation by Buffalo Springfield called "For What It's Worth." Most people know this song, but I want to read these. Somebody, another girl I followed again, she read these lyrics, and she was like, "I want you to really think about these lyrics about what he's saying." So I'm going to go to the verses that are. I wish I could play the song, but we would get a copyright strike. Um, there, there's a battle line being drawn. Nobody's right if everybody's wrong. Young people speaking their minds, getting so much resistance from behind. The next, um, the next verse says, "What a field day for the heat! A thousand people in the street singing songs as they carry signs, mostly saying, "Hooray for our side!" Mm -hmm. It's time we stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down. Paranoia strikes deep into your life. It will creep. It starts when you're always afraid. Step out of line and the men come and take you away. Anyway, I, I would highly suggest you guys go and look at these lyrics because he's kind of saying what we're saying. There is something massively wrong in our world. We know that. We know that. But each side is wrong. Mm. Nobody's right if everybody's wrong. We're all wrong. And and Mark Vicente kind of said that in his videos. When you can take a step back and you can self-assess your own ideas, you're in a healthier place. Mm. And it's gotten to this point, and it's been at this point for a while, that even in the truth of the world, if you happen to say, hey, wait a minute, I don't think that's right, people want to disband you from the truth of the world. You can't be a truther anymore. That's a cult. Yeah. It's like the normies. None of us have the answers. None of us know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know. No channeler. I mean, all these people in, this, in the truth of the world that are channeling, they've got nothing right. No. Not one thing right. No. Not it's one just thing right. hope. It's just keeping people on their backsides, not taking action. And, and again, when I'm talking this, I know it's so hard when we're not all sitting here together having a, a round table conversation. We're not saying we don't do this as well. Yeah. What we're saying is it's so easy because it's so tempting to do that. It's so tempting to put your attention into criticizing someone else, pointing what this has done when actually if we sat there and just went, holy shit, this is where we're at. They've done it again, again, because you know this pattern of behavior has been ongoing we know about it what can we do differently and get some of the great ideas out there together there's enough resilience ideas to sort of say you know everyone talks about we just have to say no well we have to say no by spending our energy on different things we can't keep trying to fight for limitations. I mean, some of the, and don't get me wrong, do, you know, I'm just using Trump and Harris as an example because most people on this platform are watching from America, not from the UK. But so the, the limitations, you know, that people can be good in some areas and have really bad advisors and be tied into different agendas and every single one of us has got our own agenda, our own priorities. But survival of all things on the planet should be above all of those individual needs and it's not it's so far below and the reality is that actions speak louder than words and there's enough things on both sides and and say trump is a savior and he gets in well, what happens in four years time yeah when another one goes and what's happened last time and look what happened during covid and look what happened whatever you think about julian assange the truth isn't out there still. How many of us have talked about all these things like the two buildings coming down? 
How many people have been talking about this, about people being assassinated? It's a joke about killery. Yeah. These things were a joke, but it's still going on. Yeah. How much more? How many Epstein people have been put in jail? Exactly. Exactly. And it's, it's you know, and I want to remind people too, like I, I've said this before, I've, you guys, especially for the Americans watching, it is against the American constitution to arrest an American political person and not tell the people. Mm. So if all these arrests have happened and the American people have not been informed, then the white hats aren't white hats. Yeah. They're, not, they're manipulating the American people. Catherine, somebody posted a list of all the celebrities who we think have passed but haven't. It's literally every celebrity from the last hundred years. Yeah. I'm like, how delusional are the Lulu? Like, this is Team Delulu now. Uh, if anybody's alive out of celebrities, I think it's Michael Jackson. That's just my opinion. I have an opinion about that. But most of them, I think, are actually gone. Yeah. They're gone. And I want to remind people, this is why I think it's so important. Maybe we should talk more about, I know Shanti wants to go more into the law of one. Maybe we should create a series about it, you, me, and Shanti, because there's a lot of real practical stuff, real logical, common sense stuff in the law of one. When people who are going service to self, which is this negative polarity, which is also a path, as is the service to, to others, which is light, we're in the middle of that friction right now. Yeah. People who are service to self on that path are never, listen to me, listen, they're never going to capitulate. They're never. never going to surrender because to capitulate or to surrender is service to others. And they're trying to go service to self. So nobody is surrendering. No one surrendered. It's still a battle. They're going to. What does a narcissist do? Catherine, a narcissist never surrenders. They double down, don't they? Well, I also think I, I've, I've always, you know, found this whole discussion for years about we're living in a matrix. And for me, and again, not saying I'm right, but it's all clicked into place recently in terms of my understanding where I am. The matrix is every single character you're seeing on the top stage is not who they say they are. Watch Candice Owens' breakdown of who Kamala Harris's real ancestors are and aren't. And the reason that matters is not because anyone gives a damn really where she comes from and what her parents did and who they are. It's the fact that everything you're being told is a lie. Everything. Yeah. And when you realise, well, I don't know why we've suddenly got an echo, when we realise that everything is a lie, then suddenly you can do that wipe a clean slate, come together, not ridicule, waste energy, ridicule people because this person believed that person, that doesn't matter. It, we've all done it. We all still yeah. will do it. But when you suddenly realise that every single person you're seeing on those top stages, whether it's royalty, whether it's politicians, whether it's celebrities, none of the none of it's real. And by real, I mean none of them are who they say they are. They're all playing a part. And to me, this is where my we're living in a matrix is that everything is not what it seems. And as once you accept that, it all becomes a lot clearer. Yeah, even YouTubers, I mean, we, we did that uh, a while back. We did a coffee chat where we looked at the Cassiopeians who were talking about the big truth are YouTubers who are not, they're co controlled opposition. They aren't who they tell you they are. Completely. They're being backward to mislead you, to make you believe that the white hats are in control, to make you believe that all these horrific tragedies that are happening, really happening, truly happening to people, no matter who's doing them, they're happening to people it's it's fake so you need to start looking at this and like bringing yourself back into your body back into your autonomy i highly suggest listening to that mark vicente episode it's only mm -hmm. 17 minutes and he makes some really good points really good points um about how how we let go of our moral compass because i guarantee you most of the truthers who are delusional now if this had happened 10 years ago they would be trying to help at this moment yeah. But because they've been so brainwashed into this truther community, this truther cult, this Q cult, we'll call it, that they can't actually understand that there is there's a psychosis going on. They can't understand that these are human beings that did nothing wrong. You can't tell me that all these little towns were just full of aluminum. It's not Twin Peaks. Like, come on, you guys. Like, these are just people. These are just people of all races, all, all ethnicities, all backgrounds.
just trying to live their lives and they deserve our support and our prayers. And again, um, I, I sent a message that if Will Bird wanted to come on from Cold Beer Confessions and do a show with us or something and talk about what's happening in his town, I think he's in Tennessee, um, show footage for you guys. I think this is just a movie and it's all CGI. It's, it's very real. It's very real. It's not fake. This actually is happening to people. And, um, and unfortunately, I think we're going to continue to see stuff like this happen be until until we transcend. And right now, there is friction, there is battle, and these things are going to happen. And we have to have each other's, you know, it's not our fault that this happened at all. I'm not saying that, but we have to react accordingly. And if there is, if something that people are, if the government is not allowing people in to help, then we have to figure out another way to continue to try to help. Because we would want the same respect as a human being if we were in their shoes. And um, and I will say, you know, for the people that are from the Southeast, we know those mountains. Mm. We know those mountains. We grew up, as, they, as she says in The Sound of Music, I grew up in these mountains. We grew up in these mountains. We know these towns. We, we need to step up and do what we can to try to help now because we know how to get around these mountains and how to, we know where things are. Right. It's uh, wherever you are in the world, when these natural disasters happen, if you're close by and you know the geography, that you know the terrain, then it's your responsibility karmically to try to help, to try to help, because that's what that's what we do on the side of light. On the side of light, we don't scoff at people's tragedy and call it fake. We have compassion and we try to help. And so anything you want to say in closing with that, Catherine? I think it's just a time for each and every one of us to really take some time out if we can, what, however that is for you, whatever your situations, and say enough about what's happened in the past. Who do I want to be today? Where do I want to put my effort and my attention? And what can I do to help and be the most, you know, be that type of person that people can trust you know, don't be the one in the Milgram experiment that just because someone tells you to turns the dial up and effectively electrocute someone. Be the type of person where, you know, I was listening to so many stories and it literally made me cry of helicopter pilots being turned down and saying, if you go back up there, you'll be arrested. Well, go back up and be arrested. Be arrested and yeah. all of us get round those people and do whatever we can to protect them. Um, because yeah. we haven't all got helicopters. We haven't all got the skills to do that. But what we can do is support the people that have. How many people, heroes in our past, have been arrested for doing the right thing? Mm. Don't be afraid to be arrested. You you have a community behind you that will go fund your bell. We'll, 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 we'll post your bell, you know, because what, a, what an incredible story to tell your kids and your grandkids that you broke the law to help people, to help people who were in need, whose lives were on the line. And so, yeah, don't be afraid. I mean, think about, I remember when we opened up our business during lockdown before it was officially time. And every morning my boyfriend would say, you might have to bail me out of jail today, mm -hmm. but this is my right to have a business and I'm going to go open my business. So be courageous. And I, I will, on closing, too, I want to remind people that, you know, and I've, I've talked about this before, but according to the law of one, once we're done with this phase of our soul's journey, and we either go 40 negative or 40 positive, what matters is not what you know. Knowing that there is some weird shenanigans and conspiracies in the world is not what's going to bring you to 40 positive. The bad guys know about these conspiracies too. What matters is how you behave and the choices that you make. Mm. So being a little psychopath and saying that this flooding, this hurricane was just to get rid of the bad guys or being a little psychopath and saying it's fake. That's not what's going to bring you to the side of good of light of service to others. What's going to bring you there is the choices that you make with what you're given and what you know and what you understand to be true. And so I would really beg you guys in the truth or enough of this cult behavior, enough of this delusional, you're, you're allowing the bad guys to win. They're laughing at you. They've played us all for fools and it's enough. We need to take our humanity back because we're better than this as, as, as a human species. I mean, maybe we're not better than this. Maybe this is just how human beings are. But I choose to believe that there are people in this world that are better. At least 50% of the human beings have a soul. So if you're somebody who has a soul, behave like it. Mm. Behave like it. Behave like Absolutely. it. Because 
I can't, I mean, I can't imagine walking in my backyard and seeing bodies in a tree. I can't imagine like even seeing that, even if it's someone you don't even know, but just seeing mangled bodies in a tree. Like I cannot imagine the horror that these are people are living in as we speak, guys, right now. They're living in it right now. It's been well, a more week. of the horror, being the type of person that sits there and what's your child and parent being washed away. You know, there. Yeah. I, I mean, this is the worst possible horror and it's happening all over the world. We can name, but we won't, I won't say any more trigger words, uh, loads of places where this is happening all over the world. And the sick psychopathy, I will just mention the pages that exploded and to see people on social media laughing about it is absolutely barbaric you know get a grip now let's let let's be the example i think we've said enough but i i honestly do feel i i feel this is an a real turning point now it's a real turning point everyone's putting all the hope on another election it's absolute ludicrousy it, it, it's not actually going to change anything it might slow down the speed of certain things but that isn't the solution to anything the solution to the everything is it's all as a mass standing together and saying right no you're not going to stop us rescuing people no we're not going to pay our taxes and give another penny to fund these wars where we're just mass wiping out all these people um no we're not doing it anymore and if enough of us do do that you know they can't put us all in jail no they can't i mean it's a that's a michael jackson's all man in the mirror if you want to change yourself change the world change yourself mm. if you want to live in a world where the white hats are in control and good guys are in control then be a good guy mm. be a caring human because that's how it changes if we all changed ourselves as catherine was saying, if we all decided to be courageous and do the right thing all of us it's done. It's over. If every single person in the Southeast banded together to go up into North, if every single Atlantean, there's 6 million people in the city of Atlanta, if every, 6 million people of us decided we were going to band together and go up to Asheville, they can't stop us, can they? If there's do, 6 it, million do it. Go up there. Protect those helicopter pilots. Do everything you can to get them in there because not the humans the animals we've seen this from earthquakes and everything people can survive for longer there will be survivors up there that need help now i think everyone who's in that area should literally drop tools and go and help i will say actually there are one more story there was what they called 911 a woman was in disastrous need of a, a medical emergency and this was as the flooding was started and the ambulance went to go get her the ambulance got caught in the flood both the woman and the ambulance driver passed away this is serious guys this is serious like this isn't a movie this isn't this is real life and and these are human beings so anyway all right. Well, I guess next week, who knows what this way. Oh, and one more thing, too, just on a quick, the bio lab that, you know, here in a, an hour outside of Atlanta, I'm hearing people saying that's fake. No, it's not. You guys, we can smell it in Atlanta. Mm. I'm an hour away from it. They evacuated Conyers. And we can smell it. And they've, they've talked about on, a, what was it, like Tuesday or Monday? One of those days, uh, we, we couldn't, uh, they, they sent messages where kids were not allowed to go outside because they were concerned about the air. You can actually smell it. So that's not fake either. And as Catherine said, just because it might be something that's like false as far as these things, doesn't mean that people aren't, it doesn't mean it didn't happen. It just mm. means who you think did it isn't who actually did it. Mm. People are getting hurt. So, all right, you guys. Well, hopefully, um, if you guys, I want to ask, actually, I know I've got a few subscribers who are in the area. If you want to share what you're seeing in the comment section for other people to see, that would be awesome. I understand if you don't, that's totally up to you. Um, and also, if you're in the area of the southeast or close or south or the northeast, but close where you can come down, give us some ideas in the comment section. Like, what can we do to try to help our fellow human beings? That are stuck right now and again i'm going to put will bird's information down in the comment section as well you guys i down the discard description box under show notes there's gonna be Catherine's information mark vicente's channel so you can watch that episode and also will bird's information if you can help his family out in any way to, to rebuild their house in their town um and then let us know if there's anything else that you think we can do if you have a really good idea can we can we gather food together i know we're on a strike right now as well but do you have a garden where you can mass grow stuff that we can quickly get to to people in need let us know down in the 
comment section. So and next week we'll be over on Catherine's channel. Hopefully we'll have better news next week, Catherine. I hope so. Yeah, thanks so much, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.